Hello dear second year students, welcome to English classroom once again. Today in this video, we'll take up a topic from soft skills. You all know that soft skills are very, very important for our life. So the very meaning itself implies that these are soft skills, they are not hard skills, they can be honed up by practice every any soft skill can be learned by practice why do you know what it is so let us explore one such important soft skill which is very very useful for your life and for your profession and your career right that is negotiation okay so we before going to the topic I'll introduce myself. I am Srikant, Assistant Professor of English. Right? So let's see what is negotiation. Right? So here we go. So negotiation. What is negotiation? Right? It's a soft skills, as I told you. In your first year, you have seen so many soft skills like self-confidence, motivation, goal setting, etc., etc. But this second year, in this third semester, you have one important soft skill, negotiation. So what is negotiation? What is the definition? So negotiation is an oral interaction between two or more parties. They may be either individuals, two individuals, two groups, or organizations or countries, etc. Two individuals or parties or warring factions or conflicting people, okay, belonging to two different ideologies. What we do here is we bring them <coughs> together for an oral interaction, for a dialogue, for a conversation, okay, for what to find out a way through a difficult or problematic situation to the satisfaction of both the sides. What happens in the negotiations? We'll bring them together and we'll try to find out ways and means so that they will agree upon a common point. Both the parties will be satisfied after um, coming to an agreement. That is the sole purpose of negotiation. So, who will do this negotiation? This is a skill. So, negotiation is done by mediators. You need to be a mediator between the two warring portions. You should bring them to a common platform wherein they can exchange their views and understand the other point of view. Right? So, you be a mediator so that you can negotiate. You can be a mediator or a, you can be a negotiator both are one and the same so if you have to be a negotiator you have to have the skill right so let's go what is the second aspect of this so this process of negotiation has certain stages you know if you know what are these stages you can be a successful negotiator or mediator and then you can bring down the conflicts between two parties or two individuals or two families or even two countries. For example, in the world is ridden with so many conflicts, okay? So many individuals, okay? They are not in talking terms, okay? What you can do is, for example, your own classmates, you can become a negotiator and you can one bring the two individuals, two of your friends to sit at a place and listen to both of them or each listening to the other person and you being the mediator need to have certain skills what skills you need to have you should have the patience first you should go to the person or first go to the two persons and ask them to come first there there won't be any friendly okay reception from them there will be hostility they'll be very very angry when you utter the word of the other person. So what do you do? You have to happen the patience to convince them to bring down to it. Okay, a place, a common platform, a table. 
So finally, that stage, stage is achieved, then your mission of bringing peace between the two individuals or your own classmates has been achieved uh, 50 percent. Half your goal is achieved. Patience is important. Tell me what are other things. You should have the communication. You must have patience to listen to them, patience to bring them to a common place, common platform or a table, and you should be a good communicator. Okay, you have to communicate with both of the two, listen to both, and you should offer uh, what you call a, so a solution kind of thing so that both will agree. Okay, so if you have these two primary sub skills like uh, patience, a little bit of communication, okay, you must convince the other person with your not only language, communication, your gestures, and your um, you know, other qualities which will make other persons believe in you. That communication is very important. Non-verbal communication is very important, right? So this negotiation has certain stages. Okay, it's a process. It's not a simple thing. You have to start working on this. You have to resolve this issue between two villages, maybe two families or two individuals. Or you can be a big negotiator at the global level, you can be a negotiator. For example, there was a war a decade ago between Sri Lankan government and the terrorists, LGT, and certain uh, international mediators negotiated a peace pact between the two warring factions. There are so many terrorist organizations. Okay, international mediators will go and okay, find out a solution a mutually agreeable solution right so why you should have this skill because you can bring down the conflicts levels between the individuals so that their time and resources can be saved so this is a process not just it doesn't happen in single go in one minute or one day it may take months to bring them to the table itself it's a process process means it involves so many stages and steps and you have to overcome some of difficulties right so first two steps we'll see. Step one and step two. Preparation is the first phase, first stage or phase. So what do you do in this stage? Arranging a formal meeting between the two groups or individuals for a fair and meaningful dialogue. You have to arrange a meeting. Okay? You talk to both the parties and make them agree to your proposal. And finally, on a scheduled day and time, a scheduled place you should bring those individuals together to a common platform right for a meaningful and fair dialogue fair, fair means without hiding the facts or without evading things escaping just to talk as it is okay that is the dialogue it should be meaningful and end of the day it should be fruitful so that is the sole purpose. First is prepare, preparing for a meeting, arrange for a meeting. This is the first stage of negotiation, which happens by the mediator, mediation of negotiators. Medi As a negotiator, you should have this. First step is you have to arrange a meeting. Got the point? Then what happens next? In the second stage, discussion takes place. So in the discussion phase, each member of the two groups present in the meeting is allowed to express Okay, his or her or their case or problems or issues as they see him. Each member should be given a chance to speak about their problem. What is their problem? What is their difficulty? You have to ask each member so that all the members of the two groups will listen, including yourselves. So that is the biggest achievement. So generally, people who conflict with each other, what happens is that they don't listen to the other person. Here, when they come to the table, we come to your meeting, okay? They will be given a chance to speak. Each member will be, give, will be given a chance to speak and all other members will listen. And the other members, they will also get their own turn and they will listen. They will have a chance that his voice can be heard by others. So there is a satisfaction that what are points, feelings, he wants to, okay, project before the members that can be achieved in this that is the greatest part of this negotiation discussing 
discussion not one member or two all members will be given to everybody will speak their own viewpoint their own standpoints that's a very very good thing that happens in negotiation it might take a little longer but if everybody is given a chance end of the day they have the satisfaction that their voice is heard their feelings are heard by the other people until then that's not happening right so what happens next after this stage right this is the illustrative picture of stage one and two both so what happens here in this picture as you can see two warring two conflicting groups have come to the table you are the mediator here this is you are the mediator and this is one group and this is another group they're sitting one before the facing each other until then that's not happening you have brought them together they're listening to each other so meeting is happening first phase second prayer they are listening to one first number one speaks all the three listens listen number two speaks all the three remaining three listen three speaks remaining three listen and fourth member of the two groups when he, she speaks all the three reason including us you are the mediator negotiator so how wonderful it is right this is the picture uh next one stage three now we come to the stage three we have completed first is preparing for a meeting arranging a meeting second is discussion each member will tell his ideas tell his problems tell what are his apprehensions okay yeah so each member listen end of the day so after completely listening to the other person it's very easy to take decisions it's very easy to come to a common point of view so clarification of goals is the third stage in the process of negotiation in this phase the members and the mediators will get clarity about others pluralities others goals and interests and they start looking at the things from the other end with a sympathetic consideration now second phase gives chance to the members to understand what are the other person's interests you will get a clarity what are the other person's goals and what are the things that everybody don't everybody is not interested everyone is not interested there are the things that everybody has this common goals so you can avoid the gray areas and you can take up common areas so what happens in this clarification of goals stage you will respect the other people's interests and as the mediator you will propose because both the sides want these things and the both the sides are not interested in these things so it is easy to put the common points together and you can arrive at okay you can what happens you will understand the goals and interests and this is one important uh, thing that happens here is you are one side will start looking at the things from the other end now we are start looking from your end you will start looking from the other end that is the important you know uh, what we call transition or phase transition that happens here in the thinking mindset of the people okay hitherto you are till now you are thinking from your angle and then you start looking from the other angle actually there is no issue at all it's a simple thing but you had so many doubts about the other person's honesty and other person's integrity but once you come and speak you get the clarity i want this and they want that okay we have no issue with this problematic area unnecessarily we are okay projecting unnecessary things and taking them to mind personally taking things personally so you will shed your personal egos and you'll start looking from this is from freezing to coin ice when frozen you can't touch this when it start melting you can touch okay so that is another important stage clarification of goals right so i'll show you a picture for this and uh, yes earlier you are like this it's like a tug of war two sides they are divided there is a dividing line right each side will be okay competing for the same rope they are pulling on either direction the same rope what happens both will fall down there won't be any result right they are moving towards destruction their relationships will be cut forever 
So on the hand, there is a phase transition, right? Happening here. That is the result of third stage. When you complete three stages in the, okay, what happens? There'll be a little bit, you will face each other, sit across the table, you will be facing each other one in front of the other and you can you will be listening very very attentively to the other person's point of view this is important stage so what happens in the third stage from confrontation to peaceful agreement there is a hope there is a hope ray of hope between the two sides until now it was not possible but for you because of your negotiation it happened it's happening so what happens in the fourth stage are you interested let's go so in this slide i'll explain stage four and five two stages fourth stage what happens negotiate towards a positive outcome you negotiate towards a positive outcome because you have the both the sides have the clarity then you as a mediator negotiate what could be the positive outcome what was pos positive result this phase focuses on finding a common ground. So anyway, you know the you have the clarity about other person's interests and priorities, and you know what are the common points, what are the points where they do disagree, and it is easy to find out. Okay, a common ground or a common minimum program for both of you, where you don't have no issues. So this is a stage. This happens. So what happens again? Both the parties involved in the dispute are made to feel that their views are considered and an amicable solution is found. So you will arrive at a common ground, a common minimum program and after arriving at the program, both the sides, all the members will have a satisfaction that their interests have been considered. Okay, their demands have been considered and looked upon by the other persons. They have the satisfaction. They are taken into consideration very seriously. That is the satisfaction. They don't object. Okay. They are already become friendly. So there will be a chance for amicable solution. Amicable means very friendly and agreeable solution. Mutually agreeable solution. It's very easy to take a decision by avoiding disputes. Right. And that is the fourth stage. You will arrive at a solution. And fifth stage, agreement. Once you agree upon a common point, then you write down a document, a written document, that is agreement. So here, both the parties uh, make, make a pact. Pact means a treaty, a deal, or a written agreement as they have agreed upon. Whatever they agreed that this should be, they have the satisfaction, they have mm, the satisfaction that their points have been Okay, considered by the other people and definitely they will whatever that has been agreed in the previous stage okay it is easy to write down an agreement and you will sign a pact sign a treaty sign a doc on a written document the document is the proof that we have agreed upon this Got point so again what happens in the same stage in the fifth stage this is the penultimate stage of course it was a win-win situation where the gray areas have been ignored or abandoned and the common interest taken up. So what happens? What is the result of this? So after writing agreement, after signing, so both the, both the parties are winners. No losers here. By negotiate. That is the okay merit of this. That is the greatness of negotiation. It's a win-win situation. Both the parties win. There are no losers, only winners. Okay. So, because you have ignored unnecessary things, right? You are only, your concentration is only common interests. So, this is the power of negotiation. And we'll go to the last uh, slide, of course, of this last stage. What happens? Last stage of this process of negotiating, okay? Process of negotiation, carrying out a course of action. Not just, it's not over yet. When once you have written a document, written an agreement and signed, but there should be a plan, okay? You should fix your own timeline in how many months and how many stages this particular, okay, stage should be over. You should, fi you fix deadlines 
by three months time this should be over and six months on this this should be accomplished so that you will achieve the final result right so action, course of action is important when it is going to be achieved and how it is going to be achieved the ways and means are very very important simply you write an agreement and go off nothing will happen but what time frame should be fixed an action plan will be made to implement the items of the agreement action plan so whatever points you agreed upon that should be okay according to your plan not simply without any plan and without any framework and the time frame to achieve the results what time frame it should be achieved? how many years or how many months or how many days you should have the clarity and both the parties should stick to the time frame that's always good because if you write an agreement and go off final results won't come unless you have a plan of action this should be done by you this should be done by you if you don't do this then you can always remind them to do that course of action and this is an excellent method of avoiding conflicts so finally agreement has been made this is the final handshake between the parties uh, between the leaders of the two parties or two groups right before they take leave and before they celebrate they have a celebration kind of thing and they shake hands and this is the result of negotiation you can stop conflicts okay in our society in our workplaces in the classroom or in the closed groups in our neighborhood like that it's an excellent method of avoiding conflicts disputes and unnecessary tensions which uh, creates so much of loss of time and energy okay this is an excellent method negotiation if you have this skill you can er eradicate you can avoid so much of tension in our life the productivity will improve and you will become the center of admiration among your peers and friends and your okay um neighborhood people so what it requires so this negotiation requires all these things require patience one thing i already told you patience you should have as a negotiator and planning you should plan i must sit right and try to resolve this when you have that idea when you have that generosity or broad mindedness then you should also plan properly and finally you should have communication skill also you should communicate you speak somebody is disputing and conflicting and uh, shouting at them you should have that skill of communication no, no no slow down a bit and this is the way and listen to him you should be able to mediate properly this communication this negotiation doesn't happen so this communication is intrinsically involved in this negotiation skill okay so that's why communication is very very major important soft skills it's almost part of so many as a being a leader you should have communication right so on the part of negotiators being a negotiator you should have these three skills one patience two planning three communication right so now you know how to become a negotiator there is a systematic method there are six stages involved so if you know don't go according to textbook it should happen naturally of course so what do you do at this stage being a student you can be a successful negotiator in your life so that will help you back in your career so try and improve the skill of negotiation and be a negotiator from this student's life itself the future okay endeavors you can be a very very successful innovator uh, a successful negotiator negotiate things between larger issues and you can become a peacemaker thank you for listening if you liked this video please do share like share and subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon for getting my notification getting notified about my future videos so we'll meet again in my next video until then take care